Hey, folks, you're live with Lonzo the Godfather, West Coast Hip Hop, and we are sitting here live in the studio. And I just, had, Dave, this is my third interview today, folks. This is my third interview today, but you ain't gonna see them all the same day. But today, I got a brother in the studio that goes back, goes back, goes back. And it took me a minute to realize who the fuck is doing Oh, shit. Okay. Mm-hmm. And once I realized who he was, it's like, damn. My man, they called him Jacquees back in the day, folks. Uh, yeah. Young brother hung, hung out here in the studio uh, when he was like 15, 16? I was 15. 15 years old. Um, we was all younger, doing all kind of stuff. Uh, he was on the Ruthless team. He's been on some of the Ruthless records. Okay. And his claim to fame is beatboxing. Now, I ain't gonna tell you what I did earlier, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna have him do that little thing again, just so I can have. <laughs> no, him. not again. Come on, man! You come on! You got one more <laughs> in you. You got one more in you. Now he, uh, before I push record, uh, he beatboxed for me. Now I fucked around right and set it up, but I didn't push the goddamn button. Everything mm-hmm. was done. So if he'd be so kind, is to give me a little beatbox for this particular video, I sure would appreciate it, my brother. So once again, the song, the song we did. In 1986, uh, was called "Fat Girl on My Jock." Uh, you heard. Uh, I think I would not start that off. I think I got a fat girl on my jock. I got a fat girl on my jock. <laughs> And that come right. to myself back then too. Wasn't no mission. Wasn't no. Wasn't no. What the? No, that was me doing that. All right, now see that these are skills that a forty-nine year old man has because he did it when he was twenty. It was fifteen. Fifteen, man. And we were talking about the same thing about pop lock, and I'm telling him as a grown man, as a grown man at forty-nine years old, if I was you, and you still got it, you just ain't use it as much. Because everything that we did back in the day mm. is becoming relevant again today. True. Okay. Dougie Fresh works his ass off in every show. He, Bruh, I used he, to want to battle Doug so bad when I was see? young. And I actually had the opportunity and the honor because uh, of doing what I do now. Okay. I actually met Doug uh, twice. Okay. I met him at um I met him at the Long Beach Poly 30th, 30th High School reunion. Okay. Paul brought him. Okay. And he brought uh Slick Rick. Mm. He brought um he brought he also brought out uh, uh what's the guy that I want to color me bad. Okay, okay. But Doug, man, I had I had to tell him like, bro, man, I used to want to battle you so bad when I was younger. I said back then I was I I, I said I can't do half the stuff I used to do back then. <laughs> but Doug can still do everything he did from from the eighties. Pit on up. Doug do it every day. Probably. Every, yeah, you're right. He, he does it every day. You, you're right. you, just, you just stopped doing it, so you just lost them skills. Like any other thing else, if you do it do it long enough or consistent enough, you'll, you'll never lose it. It'd be like riding a bike. True. I'm telling you, if I was you, because you're good, I can't figure how you made all them goddamn sounds with your mouth, but that's what makes you talented. Don't let that talent go to waste, because as you sit here in 2020, like I, like I said earlier, we got brothers – Pop locking and locking and breaking mm-hmm. in their fifties, then their sixties. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so as we move forward with this hip hop situation, because we are, we ain't nobody before us, man. No, nah. ain't nobody we, before when it comes to hip hop. Okay, we, I'm old enough to when, when hip hop started in the in the early seventies. Everything I've seen that, it start. I've seen the middle. I, I remember when I remember when there wasn't no old cats see, that knew about hip hop. Now look, we the old cats. Look, in the hip hop era, you think got about the what I'm cats. saying. Now, think about what I'm saying. As the old cats in hip hop, yeah. okay, the old, the average cat, the oldest guys in West Coast hip hop ain't 65 yet. You got me and Ice T. That's it. We didn't want to. I'm 63. And I'm he's two months, he's four months older than me. Okay, really? Yeah. He ain't 65. Okay, okay. On the West Coast. On the West Coast. Now, the East Coast is a different tale. You East got, Coast, got, uh, uh, I think uh, Herc uh, is like 69 to 70. And well, Bob- Red Alert? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how I can look him. You can look him up, but I don't have my phone in front of me. But you got you, you got a you got a little bit different situation. But on the West Coast, okay, when it comes to the West Coast, you don't have a lot of old ass dudes. I mean, we old to some of you youngsters out there. Yeah. But nonetheless, the forefathers of hip hop just now started to qualify for SSI and shit, okay? 
Whereas on the East Coast, you got players that's been collecting checks for a minute. So what I'm saying is because our group is younger, you 49, you ain't got an ARP card yet. Okay. So you could take that skill, man, and make that skill work for you because can't nobody do they don't teach it no more. No, man. Nobody Youngsters does. don't do that no more. Believe it or not, this is the honest God truth. And I think I, I talked to position about it. Um, so my man Planet Asia, okay, another young cat from the hip hop era, the real hip hop era, not the mumble stuff. Okay. Um, I got him. I got uh I even talked to my man Vernon, C W. Okay. okay, chill. Uh chill gonna be on it. Uh, okay. I told him to talk to eight. Eight, my, I'm trying to get eight on there too, and uh, I don't think I asked PZ. I asked you to be on this. I told you to do the beatbox thing. Okay, so we doing. We gonna take it back to the way it used to be. The crew used to be consistent of three things: the beatbox, the rapper, and the DJ. Okay, that's what it used to consist of back okay. in the day. So we gonna. I'm, I'm putting a project together, just beatboxing, me beatboxing. And I'm gonna have some old heads. Flow. Get some young cats. Okay, and we gonna do it. We gonna go ahead and do it. Basically. I'm going to have them, like, kind of battle each other. Okay. It's just me beatboxing. That, dude. So it was, uh, you see, I, I mean, you mentioned that. You reminded me. Dude. You know, like, I'm already working on something on that. Dude, I tell all my old school players, man, do what you did, okay? Because you'd be surprised at somebody that's going to learn from what, you, what you're what doing because they don't have that no more, man. Right. They don't have nobody that can, that, that can really beatbox. Right? You know, they say it's a lost art. Well, first of all, wasn't but a handful of cats could do it anyway. Okay. Yeah, well, it's a lot of cats that younger cats that can do it now. Some of them do it. They perfect. I it. ain't heard them yet. Oh, you gotta. You need to go on. You search on YouTube. I'll, I'll do just that. You got some okay. young cats on there that's killing the game and beatboxing. Now I'm like, damn, I wasn't doing that back then. Oh, I'm. I, I gotta see this because I, I get far. I'm concerned it's, it's a lost art. I haven't heard it on record lately. Right. He nah. Okay. That you haven't heard. Yeah. I haven't heard it on record. I agree with that. Okay. That I agree with. But nonetheless, you in the you in the position, you in the place. Who's to say that you can't just slide up on a microphone sure. one, doing the show one day? I, I, I can definitely. I, I think on the microphone it would sound better. Yeah, it would definitely sound better than this because then I'll be able to get back into my. You know, I gotta hear. I can hear it and change the tone up a little bit. I can bring back the eight oh eight. The eight oh eight sound. I was the first person and the only person on the West Coast to ever put a song out beatboxing. What song was that? Name somebody. Fat girl. Fat girl. Okay. Name name another song. No, name anybody no, from the West Coast that ever done. No, no. Outside of Dougie, but being here. I, I'm like I said, anybody uh, outside of I, I said West Coast. Okay. Nobody. I'm the first person and the only that I could recall to ever put a song out beatbox. I've battled everybody from from the Bay Area to here. Okay. I ain't I've been beat once. But who? One uh this cat named Aminu. Okay. African brother, African brother in Fresno. Okay. So I live in Fresno. I got beat one time. And I got in trouble at school, got put on punish for two months. I sat in the house and did nothing but just beatbox and just start making up different things. Okay. As a matter of fact, I think I beat him with the laugh and the beatbox at the same time. Okay. I went back to I went I, I was supposed to go home. I went straight to his school. And did, that's that's when we used to battle at school. Mm. That was when the crowd would crowd around everybody right, right, at right. schools. It wasn't no fights. Right. Even the teachers would sometimes listen. And right. I, I battled him in front of everybody in this school. Wow. And, and embarrassed him. <laughs> and embarrassed him. Got your L back. I got my L back. And then here come another one from his team, from, from his school. It was two. It was two. No, one more. Uh, BTA, they call him the BTA Express, Brian Taylor. Mm. He can never touch me. Mm. Came to Long Beach with the Long Beach problem. This was in, this was like, 80, 86. It was 86. I did school and went up to Long Beach Poly to battle whoever the baddest dude was. And probably I can't remember his name. He couldn't touch me. What school did you go to? I went to Jordan. All right. Did you did you go to the uh, the concert back in the day, Long Beach uh, Arena, when they had the big fight? Yep. Talking about the one at Long Beach at the Long Beach uh, Long Beach concert. Yeah, I was there. Talking that, about Fresh Fest. What was it? Fresh, Fresh Fest Fresh, Three. Yeah. Fresh Fest. Fresh Fest Three. Yeah. Oh, bro, what? Went to go one of the we I think we I think we got a chance. I think we saw the only people that performed, if I can recall, was the Beastie Boys perform. I think LL. I think Houdini. After that, it was a rap. We didn't get to see Run DMC. Now, I, somebody called me about this. I didn't. I didn't do a lot of rap concerts. Usually, I was working. Yeah. I had to eat after dark, so I was always working. I was usually wait for the after party. Right. And uh, a buddy might have asked me about that show. I said, no, nah, I didn't make that one right there, man. Now, how was that show? How, 
Did you know what started it? It was just it was a so what I not, so it we was actually reminded of that again. From my understanding, the Roller Sixties cast was funking with somebody up at the somebody in the in the. It was a, I know I saw it. It was all up in the all up in the uh, Raptors in the Raptors at right. the time, and it was supposedly the Roller Sixties. I believe it was the Roller Sixties came. And they was getting in, I was digging in people's asses back in the day, man. Then then the the Long Beach cats started getting involved and. It was just one big brawl, man. Everybody's off for yourself, getting the hell out of there, man. I think oh, man, I'm trying to. What year was it, man? 80, 85, 85, 86, dude. I think it was, man. I think it was. I'm trying to remember. Because Swatch watches ain't been ain't ain't been and they ain't been shit for a little while now. So yeah, that was, Swatch watches was out when we was in junior high. But that was a Swatch. It was one of the Swatch thing. A, a Swatch like a Swatch watch watches was sponsoring the concert. It was the Fresh Fest sponsored by a Swatch Watch. My mistake. I don't remember, man. He just really did a bit sometimes. You forget, you forget that good shit. That long ago, man. I know that was the show. I wish that was a show that could be brought back up again. What? Fresh Fest? Hell yeah. Now, the Fresh Fest, <clears throat> it could work, but it all depends. See, the, the problem we're going to have is, probably you're going to have is, if you don't bring in, they're going to want to bring in some young acts, and that's when the bullshit going to come. No, nah, we ain't bringing no young acts in. Ain't nobody. If you brought in. Because it's going to be catering to us. Well, that's what I'm saying. See, but see, but it, a lot of promoters ain't that goddamn smart, okay? Mm. You know, if you brought in, the, say, uh, what, Mo D and Run DMC and. Run D, yeah, so I've asked about that. I actually talked to somebody about that is a promoter. Right now, that brings a lot of stuff to the to to to, to L.A., Long mm-hmm. Beach, California, period, and, and even in other states, but heavily. Mm-hmm. And I asked him, I'm like, "Look, man, we need to bring back. We need to bring back what was the, what we had was called Fresh Fest." And I mentioned that. He said, "You ain't gonna get Run DMC to perform again ever." Mm-hmm. Now, I found the irony. The irony I found in that was somebody showed me something on YouTube. And I can't think of the DJ's name. I can't think of his name. Where he had a lot of a lot of artists would come on and perform. It was like it's like a podcast, but they would be at home. Right, right, right. That's and right. they would perform. I saw Run DMC perform a song together. Run DMC or just DMC? It was both of them. Okay. Well, I guess that's digital. You know, I don't know. I, I, I that's the, the, the Latino boy with the hat, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. He does yeah. it. Uh, I forgot what they called it, but uh, yeah, he he, he have everybody. He did coming. one with the R and B, right? R and B, and then he did one with hip hop. Okay, but I'm told like somebody in the promoter said, "Man, you he said we he said that Run DMC thing not gonna happen. Like he's not gonna get him to perform again." Hmm. I don't know. I wonder what's happening with that. You know, I would love. I uh, we talked about doing a, a West Coast reunion show with uh, Wrecking Crew, LA Dream Team, do it. JJ Fad. We was gonna do it till Bro, COVID hit. Before I ever did anything, before I ever did Fat Girl, I opened up with. I've, I've, I've opened up four. Uh, uh, I opened up for y'all before too. Oh yeah, you remember the K Day Kids? Yeah, we did a. Sh- there was a K Day Kids show uh, down. I think it, we it was in a. Uh, uh, it was downtown. They set a stage up. I think it was at the. Uh, it was at the the, the city hall. Oh, you, wait, y'all wait, performed. Wait, 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 wait. The, the, the world class, not the world class. The LA the Dream world class Team perform. Uh, the LA. I don't remember the LA Dream Team being there, but. Uh, Egyptian Lover performed. That's the one. And, and, the fight and Run broke DMC out. came. No, nah. Run DMC came. Okay. This I was in eighth grade when that happened. Downtown LA. I was thirteen years old when that happened. This is before we. I don't. I didn't meet you guys though. Okay. But I opened up for you. For you okay. Guys. You was one of the LA kids. Yeah, I was one of the. I was one of the K Day kids. K Day kids. Fifteen eighty AM. Okay. Okay. Back then, AM radio was the shit back in those days. AM, that's all we had, dude. We had two radio stations. Which one was KGFJ. KGFJ. That's you old. You old. 12, what was you it? old. 1230. 1230. And then we had 1230. 1530 KDA AM. <laughs> that was it. 1230. Now, that you, know, it. you know about, you know about KGFJ 1230, you got to have an ARP card in the mail now. <laughs> got to have one. Got one coming in the mail. I'm going to mail it my goddamn self. Those was the radio stations. That's all we had back then, man. We used, we used to do mixes for both of them. Yeah, I remember the quick we, mix. Yeah, we got we got, used uh, to kill it, man. Why couldn't wait? We 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 got fired from uh, K Day though. For real? Yeah, they fired us because we was doing. See, we were the only ones doing the shit. Okay, we were the only ones. That doing, was right. They used to we broadcast were, from Eve after dark back in the day. No, no, too, they didn't bro- they? Dudos. Where? Dudos. I could. I was too young. Couldn't yeah. go there. We uh we were the only ones doing the the mixes. 
on for K Day, and then uh, K Day didn't pay us. Mm. They paid us in music and tape. Mm. KGFJ replied us a couple of dollars. Okay, okay. So we do different mixes for KGFJ, and when Greg heard about that shit, he got mad. We so were, oh, Greg Mack? Yeah, he got mad and cut us loose. And then he then he brought in Tony G now. Do you remember Roy Kaufman? Hell yeah, I remember Roy Kaufman. That was my boy. That was the person that was that was the person that I used to be around when we, that was around us that was like that was sponsoring the KD kids. I used to have okay, had, had the mat, biggest crush in his sister. Uh I think I remember her. Yeah, she, she worked there too. Didn't she, she was a kitty pie. Didn't she work there too? No, she but she always hung out with Rory on Friday because Rory would do uh Rory was the public relations man for, for K Day. He'd always come out to do those if right. Greg didn't come out. Or sometimes he'd come out anyway. But um, he would come out if Greg didn't come out, or sometimes he'd just hang out with us. We just we just had a good relationship. I talked to him. He's up in up in uh, Sacramento now. He works for a politician now. Oh, really? Yeah, he, okay. he's got into politics. Tell me something. Go for it. I always wanted to ask when I was a kid. Weren't, was the World Class Wrecking Crew and, and Uncle Jam's Army affiliated? World class beat. See, people people don't understand. This is how our affiliation works. Okay, me and Roger used to be the best of friends. Okay, when we first got into the music business. Roger was a DJ. I was a DJ. We both. Uh, I got him a job at this record company, mm. record distributor. Then he called me back a couple weeks later. Got me a job working in the same place, same warehouse. Mm. When, we, when Roger started doing Alpine Village, I was his DJ at Alpine Village. Mm-hmm. And um, I ran that. I, I was a DJ for the first, yeah, for the first, maybe the first six months to a year. Mm-hmm. Then I got popular. People started hiring me mm-hmm. to do their parties at Alpine Village. Mm-hmm. He got mad. Okay. You my DJ. This my, is my <laughs> spot. No, Nick Rowe. This man went to club, rent his venue to anybody he wants to, and somebody got some money. I'm coming to I'm going to work. We ain't got no contracts. I'm exclusive to you. Right. Okay. You wouldn't pay me but sixty dollars or a hundred dollars a night. Okay. I had a truck full of shit. Okay. Mm-hmm. And a bad back. I remember, I remember those days. And uh, we crazy. As we always was cool. That we always fought. We had the most. We had the most uh, craziest relationship because. Uh, we we did corporate espionage on each other, you know. <laughs> no bullshit, no bullshit. We was we did some gangster shit. We, you know, back in the day, man. If you knew how many posters a guy, a guy had, or knew when the event was gonna be, you plan another event either the next night or get some flyers made up to do the after party. That was my thing. I did the after party because the E closed at five o'clock. Mm. Okay, so when everybody else closing at twelve thirty one o'clock, mm-hmm. right, you got four hours you, over eighteen. Come on down to the Eve of the Dark, bring your ticket stuff, get in for $3 or $2, whatever I felt like charging, okay? Right, right. So me and Roger was always cool, and we all, but we always fought because we got different philosophies. Mm-hmm. My philosophy was always to be consistent and try and you know, get you a venue and rock that shit for long periods of time. His was always doing big shit, okay? Mm-hmm. Now, everybody got their own impression, their own... Uh, um, own thoughts on being successful, but every club I had, I had for six years or more. Even at the dark, had them motherfuckers from 79 to 85. Mm. Okay, do those. I got, I, I had do those in Skateland. I had do those on Friday, Skateland on Saturday. Okay, killing them both nights. It was easy back then. Okay, then I had, then, then I think what really messed us up, he brought me into a club uh, on, Ava, I mean, on Elsa Gun, I mean, on, I'm not, I'm not, but, uh, on Manchester, I was out of the club business completely. Mm. Roger had a record store. I had the club. I had my little my little spot. I was doing this thing called at All Access Records, making CDs for cats and shit. Yeah. And uh, me and Trey got into it about some bullshit, and he sued me. But I, I still had money coming, so I got about thirty five grand. And Roger saw it in the paper. The shit made the paper. I mean, made the billboard. Right. Called me. Hey man, we could we could do this club. And I don't want to do no more clubs. I'm tired of clubs. And he got me taught me to doing this club on on uh, Manchester. It's, if you go by there right now, it's a uh, Millennium Shoe Store on Manchester mm. Eucalyptus. Okay, in Inglewood. Anyway, we was doing this thing together, and he never came back with the money. And I'm a businessman, dude. I'm I spent damn near all my settlement getting this club together. And you keep hollering, I'm going to bring money tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. I'm 15 grand in this damn thing, right? Okay. 
And I'm like, dude, come on with it. So he didn't do it. And make a long story short, we fell out on that. Then he goes to the Hollywood Park Casino and opened his own club up called Brown Sugar. We he around the corner kicking my ass. Mm. But then he got kicked out of there. 18 months later, the people that ran the Hollywood Park Casino contacted me to come over there. So we fall out again. So, you know, we had this love-hate relationship, so we never was together. People always get us confused. They swear to God, I'm, I'm, but, but even, but here's the crazy part, though. When they, when they had the Uncle Jam's Army Day a couple of years ago, they invited me out to come. Yeah, when they, had, they did a reunion. They had a reunion. Yeah. I was at, I, I, me, and, me and clientele did a reunion at the Savoy. Uh, we was invited out to hang out with them at the- Was uh, Mike there? Michael T. Mike was there. No, who Arabian Prince. Oh yeah, uh, Kim, Kim the Zell. Who Mike or Arabian Prince? That's Kim. His name is Kim. He got he go by Mike Lazern on the day. Oh no Facebook. no no that that, that that that's that's his name backwards. For real, that's his name backwards. I need to pay attention to that. Yeah, his, name, his real name is Kim the the, the Kim the Zell, but he he does backwards. That's why it's that. Mike M I K. I didn't even know that. Kim is Mike M I K backwards. I never knew that. That's what it is. I never knew that. Yeah. Same person. Yeah, he was there. He was calling him Prince most of the time. Nah, fact, yeah, so there. he was there. LA Dream Team was there. And uh and uh when they when they uh did the thing at the um at the convention center, they taught, they invited me out to hang out, take pictures and stuff. Mm-hmm. Cause you know, you gotta you got understand, man, back then it was a different time when 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 we fought, we didn't fight to kill. Right. We fight to get paid. Right. Okay, we was trying to up, one up each other. Mm. Okay, and it, it, it was even when Roger died, man. It was funny because I tell people all the time when I was writing my book before Roger died, so I could beat him to the book. <laughs> Y'all no was bugs. We was like that, man. man. We were like bugs, buddy. Y'all never stayed bugs. In competition. We stayed in competition, man. In fact, the last time, one of the last things we did. Uh, the DJ they had a DJ picnic out in, out in uh, Culver City. When was this? This is a few years ago. It's a, it's a long time now. But they had a DJ picnic. They used to do a DJ picnic in Culver City, just a little park. Mm-hmm. Well, I had just cut a deal with the Proud Bird over on Aviation. Mm-hmm. Nobody has ever had a club in the Proud Bird any length of time. Mm-hmm. Well, I, could, I, I, met, I knew the guy who was, was a catering director, and they got this little room up top, hold about 150, 200 people. And I made an offer. They accepted it. Hmm. But I knew if Roger found out about that shit, he would have a fit. Okay. <laughs> so I saw Roger that Sunday hmm. at the DJ picnic. I had a handful of flyers. I wouldn't even pass them motherfuckers out. Oh, no, oh, man. No, because I knew I had radio jumping off Monday morning. Okay. So I read really, I really him, him get hit with the radio. Okay. Because <laughs> radio would kick a nigga in the nuts. Okay. So I told my boy Proud Bird, I said, look, man, my commercial is going to start running about 9.30 in the morning on the Steve Harvey morning show. You're going to get a phone call about 10, 10.30 from Roger Clayton wanting to figure out what the hell. He said, no. I said, watch. Sure enough. He did. <laughs> the nigga called. <laughs> Pitching the bitch. How long do we get a club in the Proud Bird? And I've been trying to do the Proud Bird, blah, 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 blah. Well, here's, here's, here's how, how, how deep our fucking shit go, man. Roger got so mad and homeboy blocked him. My partner blocked him mm. from doing an event at the Proud Bird on the same night, okay? So Roger went to another partner of ours mm. um, who, and he booked it, he booked it through him, okay? He, he booked the Proud Bird. He slick. He, 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 wait a minute, he got me. He booked the Proud Bird through, <coughs> our, through our partner. <coughs> Saying it was gonna be his mama's birthday party, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And Roger had the room downstairs because Proud, Proud Bird got like three rooms, four rooms in there. Mm-hmm. Got the big room on the side, room in the room, a room right there in the front, one in the one inside, and one upstairs. I had the one upstairs. He had the one out <laughs> front that people had to pass him to get to me. So he had me in check. He had me in straight check for New Year's Eve. Why was he so determined to outdo you, man? Because that's what we did. Damn. He, but, 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 but he wouldn't let the man eat. But wait, dig this. He had me in check for New Year's Eve, okay? I was mad. I was mad. I was mad. 
and the nigga died. The nigga died. He died on 10 10, 2010. And I ended up with that room for New Year's Eve. Biggest party I ever had in my life. Wow. Stevie Wonder came to that party. Really? Kevin Nash was he was partying with me that night and he invited Stevie and Stevie showed up. Wow. That was that Roger died. That was uh New Year's Eve 2010. That was yeah, 10, 10 years ago. He died. Roger died 10 10 2010. Damn. So we just we just not be celebrated, but we Damn. just acknowledged that a couple That's a last great, month. Wow. And he, other than 10, that, 10, 2, wow. And I stopped writing my book. And when I when when I got the phone call, he had died. I stopped writing the book. Man. You stopped writing? I stopped writing the motherfucker. What the reason? What I'm writing for? I can't who, the, who am I all shine now? No, no, you should still write it. I I wrote the motherfucker. Oh, okay. I went back to writing it after I heard about it straight out of Compton. Okay. I said, Oh, <laughs> so that was my new motivation. Okay. Right. You know, sometimes, man, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a funny dude. Sometimes if I'm motivated by something, mm -hmm. I can get it done. If I ain't not have no motivation, it kind of kills my passion. And yeah, I'll do it. But if I ain't really into it, like I, I'm into this, I'm into this shit right here. This right. Po podcast telling, I remember you telling me about it. You used to, I remember, remember I, I love doing this it. shit because I get to meet, I can talk to people and I get to hear your story. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I get to know what, 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 what part you played. And because some, you know, I, I've been around so many people, people have come to the studio so much, and a lot of you guys I ain't seen no more. Okay, and I yeah. disappeared. After See what I'm six, sixteen after sixteen, the last thing I did with them was uh, was uh, eight ball. Uh, Why eight ball? Dope eight. man and panic zone. Now here's something that people didn't know. You know who was originally supposed to do dope man, right? Rond Rondell, right? Who? Rondell was gone already. Okay. He wasn't even around for that. Who, who? So the original, so the song "Dope Man" when you hear it was recorded by Ice Cube, right? Wasn't supposed to be. Okay. If you get an original copy of it, and if you remember the original, the original Boys in the Hood, the first one, when Easy had that that vocal effect in the background with him, mm -hmm. that was when they was using the Freddy Krueger sound. Remember okay. the Freddy Krueger? Okay. So they were, so Eric had that that effect on his voice when he would rap because he liked the way he sounded when okay. he talked when he when he rhymed. But if you go listen to an original copy of Dope Man, okay. you'll hear that effect in Ice Cube's voice. Mm. Cube was, <laughs> Eric kept fucking up. Cube was like, man, get the fuck out the damn studio. Cube went in there. That's why he was angry, because because Eric kept fucking up. That's when Cube went in there. It was one sad bottle man who couldn't quit. Dope Man, please, can I? And he was angry. He heard it in his voice. Mm. One take. Mm. Walked out of the booth. That's how the fuck you record the goddamn song, Eric. <laughs> Dre, look. We gonna leave that right there just like that. Mm. That's how it ended up being Cube on the song. It's See? supposed to always be, it was always supposed to be Eric on that song. Mm. And then us as a group going in there doing the fuck it up, all that, all that stuff. Okay. That was us as a group. That was the last, I was supposed to record a song that, uh, that day with them. Eric wanted me to do a song with, uh, uh, Crazy D. Crazy D. We were supposed to have been a group, me and him. Okay. He had a, he wrote a song literally called It Must Be Freshly Done. Okay. So, and the irony of it was he didn't even know who I was when he wrote it. Okay. So I was supposed to be beatboxing, and of course he was going to rap. Okay. And uh, it never, of course it never came to fruition. Like I said, I was only 16, so I, Man, I, 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 talked to Fresno. I talked to Crazy D right middle of this COVID situation, man. He, uh, he was going through some things. He had a, yeah, he had a, unfortunately, uh, he had a, had a, had a, a stroke. I yeah, he had, he had a mild stroke, and he was recovering from that. He said he's going to do the podcast, and I, I got his number. I'm going to reach out for him, make sure you're right. He told me he was leaving town, though, because his mom, his mom, his nephew, he has to I haven't him. talked to him in a minute. I, last time I texted him, it was right before COVID. He's probably one of the most do... requested cats to do my podcast. It's Crazy D. We were supposed to do a we were supposed to do a radio station. Okay. Uh, right. Interview with the radio station okay. about original members of the NWA. Okay. And I had called you about that. Remember? Okay. They were supposed to come here and do the interview. You remember that? You don't remember me telling us we were supposed to do an interview with radio station out of uh out of Bakersfield. Oh shit. The, <clears throat> wasn't the bigger boys, was it? No. Nah. Okay. We were supposed to do a radio station interview uh about NWA stuff. And unfortunately that didn't happen. You know, you was busy. I think you was uh, you was doing some some classes. Oh yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah. Was that busy. was early. That and was early. And I was finished, and I had to go on, all going on the on the road with dog. 
Okay. So it was like, we, you know, appointment tag. You got any pictures with Easy? We had none, man. None. None. You know, you know, we gotta remember, man. Back in '86, the 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 picture thing wasn't as big as big as it is now. I tell people all the time, man. man I, I don't have I don't have a picture with him either. I said, shit, man. Camera back then? Come on, dude. Yeah, you nobody, might get a Polaroid if we got a club or something. Yeah, yeah wasn't nobody randomly walking around right. with a damn camera. You barely back got video, day, man. A video camera back <laughs> in the eighties cost you like two thousand dollars, bro. You had to, and wait a minute. We used to have a lot now. <laughs> iron, iron, irony of that one is, is that when we was in high school, there is video footage. A guy used to bring a brother named Red. He used to, he he brought it. He brought a camera to school when mm. we was in high school, man. Uh, I want to say this was. I want to say this was. I think he. I, I don't know if it was our tenth grade year or our senior year. I can't remember. Dog was there mm. at the time, so might it had to. I can't remember if it was our 10th grade year or senior year, man. Was Warren, you go to school with Warren too? No, but me and Warren, Warren and I went to summer school together. Okay. We got, well, I got kicked out of summer school because all me and Warren used, me, Warren, and this dude named uh, David, that's all we used to do was sit in class and bag on each other. What <laughs> about Nate? <laughs> no, man. And this is crazy. My aunt passed away a couple, a couple months ago. My, uh, my aunt, they lived in the same spot, man, Long before Beach? I was born. Yeah. Right on Olive. Olive and 19. Okay. Uh, and I didn't know that. My, my grandmother lived on the north side. Okay. So there was a funeral. When you would go over the bridge coming from the north going towards the east side, the east side you would come over that, that, that bridge okay. where the 91 or 710 is. Yeah. There used to be a place called Shady Acres. It was right. a golf place. Right, you got to play it all the time. And then you go, you go a little bit further down. There's a funeral home on the corner. Okay. So the irony is that my aunt passed away. We go to the funeral home, and I find out that not only am I related to the doggone people who own the funeral home. Okay. Then he shows me. Uh, he said, "You see that man walking right there?" I'm like, uh, "Yeah, we're, we're with my grandmother." And I'm like, yeah. He said, that's Nate Dogs. He said it was his father or his uncle. Mm, no shit. I'm like, yeah. Now, he said, that's my uncle. He said, that's your... You, you, I didn't even know I was related to the man. Never met Nate Dog. Now, here goes some shit I just found out myself. Two things. Two things. In Nate Dogg's song, Regulator, mm -hmm. he talks about uh, 18th Lewis... Shooting, you know, me and, was know, it 18th Lewis or 21st and Lewis. Lewis? Right around 20, the corner 20, from my house. 21st and Lewis, right? And I, my partner, unknown, he lived in Long Beach. So I said, they go 21st Street. Let me bust it up. Because I remember I have an auntie mm -hmm. that lived on, on in that area, right? Right, right, right. And I got there, 20, uh, 21st and Lewis, T-Bones. Right. At the, in that T-Bone, it's the rest of the apartment building right there, right now. It's a uh, yeah, some, it's a house. Gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But before, but the apartment it used to be a it used to be a cafe. Really? It was Callie's Cafe. Wow, okay. I didn't know that. Callie's Cafe. Callie is my mama's auntie. Okay, I see Warren. I said Warren. When you was talking about Twenty First and Lewis, you ever remember Callie's Cafe? Hell yeah, Lonzo. That's I ate there all the time. I grew up on them burgers. That's my mama's auntie. Wow. Okay, my my mama's my grandmama's sister. On that restaurant, my, all my family moved to Long Beach. Okay, I from where? Don't from, say Mississippi. From Louisiana. Okay, Mississippi and Louisiana. Okay, my, my all my family moved from Louisiana. Uh, my uncle got in trouble. They shot. He, he joined the Air Force. Hmm. And my auntie, my mom, my grandmother's aunties already moved to Louisiana. My grandmother came in right behind them. And remember the club, Miss Wiz? I live, I live on the east side. Okay, so I really don't know much. Well, they had a the club Miss, called Miss Wiz. It was a comedy club. That's what DL, Yuli, Robin Harris, all the folks. Oh, that was, my, in, was that in LA or Long that Beach? That was in Long Beach. Really? Yeah. Okay. Long Beach, right there on the Long Beach Boulevard. My, my, uh, Long Beach Boulevard and what? I couldn't tell you. It's Closer to downtown? Not far, not far from where you're talking about, what, by the bridge. Not in that, in that area over there. Okay. It's, gone, it's been gone for years. Don't worry about it. Don't worry Man. about it. But um, we were talk, me, and, me and Warren kicked it, and we were talking about how that was, he, he ate at my auntie's restaurant all the time, all of them as kids. Now, since the COVID shit jumped off, we sitting here, we doing the family Zoom meeting. Mm -hmm. I told my people, I said, look, man, we, we don't get together for funerals and shit. That's some bullshit. Yeah. Let's, let's hook up on something. We got this technology. Niggas can't go nowhere. Let's at least connect. Right. Get on the Zoom meeting. I got people in Long Beach. Okay, she tells me 
that my cousin tells him who I am, my other cousin who knows. Hey, it's my cousin, you know, you see trying to count. Oh, this is your cousin, your famous, your famous cousin, right? And she says, lady says, oh, that's interesting because my mama's niece is Nate Dog. Okay. Wait, wait, your mother's niece? His, his, or this lady's his mother. This lady's uh my one of my distant cousins, mother's oh wait, hold on, hold on. This my mother, her, her mother, her her mother's somehow her mother's late Nate, Nate, Nate Dog. Okay. And I'm like, damn, because I know we got a lot of folks in Long Beach. Right. Uh, that whole little area right there, Man, 21st and Lewis. A lot of people. My, my auntie, my family, my family name was Bailey's. We was a bunch of Bailey's down there. Bailey's mm -hmm. and Reed's, that was all down in the Long Beach area. And I just, we had, all the folks died years ago, so I haven't right. even seen them. But as I'm doing my little investigation, names keep popping up. I just had a chance to do no real no, no secure, no solid investigation. Who was what? But you never know, man. We might be sitting. You might be sitting next to family. This is exactly so. The person that that got us back together, uh, 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 the care, the car, the car. His brother, Big Keys. Yeah, said these are the exact words. He said, "Man, you Long Beach, all you Long Beach niggas get together, man. It probably end up being be all y'all related." But you don't tell it. And to be honest, in the last three years, it's, it's damn near close to being that. Wow. Like, cause I, I didn't, uh, Joe Cool. Okay. You know who Joe Cool is, yeah. right? Snoop, Snoop cousin. Yeah. Joe Cool used to live in my neighborhood on, on, on the north side. Wow. When he was, in, I never, I never knew that. Mm. See? Like, it's, 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 it's like, I, and me and Dog, Dog used to hang around my, my cousin, uh, my cousin from 22, Big okay. Fred. Okay. Uh, they call him Big Fred or 89. Okay. They was always together back in the day, back mm. in the high school days and a little bit after the high school when they was doing it wow. on the street. But we never, ever, ever knew. See? None of us was related to well, each see, other. See, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's important, man, that black folks get together. We, we got to put that hood thing to the side because you got family in different, different territories, man, that you might be shooting at. Or might be beefing with. I used to say that all the time too. We got we got we got to find a way to take the violence out of that shit, man. You know, be more like fraternities. I'm I'm, I'm East Side Pyro. I'm East Side Blood. Whatever you are, I don't give a shit. Right. Okay, but don't shoot me, nigga. That's all. Right. Just don't shoot don't me. Shoot. I don't care. Yeah. Just don't shoot me. A lot's changed since our days, man. You got to remember in the nineties, it was what it was World War the war zone over back in those days, man. You know what? It's not like that now. You know what? Nah, this is the part that I get in trouble for. We talk about the election, Joe Biden mm -hmm. and the crime bill. Okay, he signed that crime bill in 1992. Mm -hmm. If you was around the streets in 1992, you'd have gave the motherfucking pen. Okay, because mm -hmm. the streets was lit. Very. The streets was lit. Very. They was finding niggas dead all the time. They was drive bys. Drive bys. It was horrible. Okay, uh, I'm not justifying. Yeah, yeah. Nobody putting a black man in jail, but yeah. we got to come up with some way to detour some of this bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause the streets was on fire in the nineties. Okay, right. crack cocaine. The eighties too. No, the the, end well, of the, the mid eighties. Well, you know what? 80s? The eighties. It was just they were like testing the waters. But by 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 nineteen eighty nine and ninety and eighty nine yep. to about ninety two, yep. ninety three. Yeah, man. Before they came up with that bullshit, hotter than fish grease. It was hotter than fish grease. Yeah. Okay, now. They played us on the whole law that go to jail for crack cocaine, you powder cocaine, you go to rehab. That was some that bullshit. That was some retarded stuff right there. That was some bullshit. bullshit. And then they gave niggas mandatory jail sentences for crack cocaine. They knew because the white boys love snorting cocaine, right. and they still love that shit today. That's why they can't stop it. Crack so cocaine good. is not as popular Didn't as they it finally used to change, be. They changed that law, though, finally. They, they, they finally didn't. changed it. But I'm just saying, back in the day, uh, when, when, when powder first came out, Powder first came out. I well, we're not gonna say first came out. When I when I, when I first got recognized powder, mm. okay, I was DJing for a pimp. Mm. Okay. There was a there was a, a venue on that the was corner. in the seventies. Seventies. I remember okay. seeing that shit when I was a kid. I was DJing up. for this pimp and he had a party at the place called the Tahitian Village on Lakewood and Rosecrans. It's gone now. Okay. The, the event was whack as hell. He, I did, did I did a party <clears throat> for uh two hundred dollars. Mm. He gave me a hundred cash and he gave me an eight ball of coke, uh, eight ball of cocaine. I ain't know what it was. I ain't know what it was. I'm 20, 19, 20 years old. Mm. I ain't never seen this shit before. Nigga, what's this white shit? 
And I took it to my cousin, who's like my big brother. Yeah. I, took, I said, man, oh boy, he had no money last night. He gave me this right here. Nigga, where you get that from? <laughs> I say, homeboy gave it to me last night. He said, man, that's worth about three, four hundred dollars. I say, what? And that was the first time I ever experienced that shit in any way form of fashion. Right. But back then, powder cocaine was called the champagne drug. Oh, really? That was only for ballers. Because it was expensive. It was expensive. Yeah. It was, it was only, only for yeah, ballers. Yeah, yeah. It was only for ballers. If you wasn't a baller. You wasn't by You living in Compton in projects. You wasn't afford no fucking. You, if, no, you, no. if you was, if you, it was, <laughs> they call it a gentleman's game back then. Okay. <laughs> And this is why I say this is this is why I say it's important that youngsters, old niggas talk to youngsters, because the streets was a lot different. Okay. Yeah. You if you were a grown man selling powder cocaine, there is nowhere in the world you would sell to anybody under 21 years old. You would even talk to them. They couldn't even know your business. Nope. They would not know that you had that shit because, you know, if you if you had powder cocaine in the 70s. Only people knew you had it were the people you sold it to, because that you you got so much time for having that shit, and it was and the, and the, here it is. The next problem was free bets. The, the entry level, the, the, the shit was thirty. The uh, IKEA cocaine was thirty thousand dollars. Was it that much? It was thirty thousand dollars. It was thirty grand. Really? Look at Superfly. Look at Super Superfly the movie. Superfly. If you ever see the old school movie Superfly, of course. Superfly was trying to get out, and he had a, he had a hundred keys for three hundred thousand dollars. That's thirty grand. That's thirty. That's thirty grand a key. He was trying to sell thirty key, a hundred keys to get three hundred grand. That was his goal. Okay, so it was a hundred grand. A no, key. it had to be more than three hundred thousand. Because if I'm not mistaken, isn't t- t- uh, uh, isn't a uh, uh, ten Keys three hundred thousand. No, ten keys. Ten times be, thirty is three hundred thousand. No, ten times ten times would be what? Ten times? Well, we we, we, we gonna sound that dumb was as three fuck. million. Okay, right, three million. We, we gonna sound dumb as fuck on this goddamn thing. <laughs> <laughs> but ten times thirty. Ten times ten times ten times thirty. Yeah, is three hundred. Three hundred. Three hundred thousand. Okay, so you're right. That was three hundred thousand. So if he had a hundred of those, right, he looked, he looked it should have been like three, three million. Mil. Okay, you might be right. You probably right. Check his math. But, but anyway, folks, we ain't numb. We just we just moving fast right now. We sound dumb as fuck. Okay, but that's okay. That's okay. But 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 but, but, but the game. But all I'm, I'm trying to show you how the game was. How I did yeah, the yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. So when when the, when the uh, when the shit hit in the nineties. When I talked to Freeway Rick, he said he was paying, he was selling shit for eleven five. That's what I'm like. I don't rem- ever remember it being thirty thousand. Because, because, because again, it was a lot. It was it was the demand was not that great. So when demand goes down, the price goes up. Okay. Okay. It was supply and so demand. The demand is in. But all of a sudden, the the, 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 uh, the demand went up. The price went down because we could move so much of this shit. I'm not buying at thirty thousand no more. I'll buy it at fifteen or ten. Right. Okay. Even at um, even in, in New Jack City, when Chris Rock and, and Ice T talking about the shit, he wants seventeen. Yep. Seventeen. Yeah, yep. Seventeen, nigga. I ain't get you no seventeen. Yeah. And so that was a that was a big dis- discount. Yeah. From the what you know what they was what was happening. So anyway, man, it just um, just the the, the streets changed so much. And uh, like I have to tell this story. I can tell people, Bill Cosby and all them cats back in the day when you didn't have to have uh, quaaludes and, and cocaine to get laid. You mm-hmm. didn't have to have. But if you had the shit, you was getting pussy. Your, your, your chance Period. to get laid and increased. Discussion. Okay? Because the average person mm-hmm. couldn't afford it. It was, a, it was considered a, a champagne drug, a party drug for the rich and famous. And people wanted to be around those people that had that kind of stuff or that kind of money, but uh, both those drugs are what what have you doing shit you don't normally do because they they they, they uh, block your inhibitors. They make mm-hmm. you relaxed. Okay, so girls are sucking things they normally don't suck. They doing things they normally don't do, but they ain't got no regret for it because shit, I'm high as a mother. Anyway, folks, That's you're live with Miles of the Godfather West Coast. Another history lesson on some old school old shit. School shit. Some shit I can't talk. I can't talk with everybody about. But you know, <laughs> I ain't. I ain't never said I was no saint. I ain't. No, I just say tell you I wasn't no gangster. Anyway, folks, um, where we go for we wrap this up, man? We looking real good on time. We got a good interview here, man. Yeah. Well. 
I, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a leave it with this here. By God's mercy, how I met position who you had uh, uh, interviewed. By God's mercy, how I met him was uh, we went on tour in Canada. Um, I ended up working for Snoop mm. um, as a bodyguard. Uh, and the irony of it is, is that I knew the man long before there was fame, before mm. the fame, man. We were just kids in school beatboxing. Okay. Or, or in the middle of the street playing murder ball, like mm. we used to play murder wow. ball, football wow. in the middle of the street back in the day, man. Um, but I was, I've been blessed. To, I, I, I started in the music industry when I was young. I recorded when I was 16. Unfortunately, I didn't get paid for what uh, I my did. My next question. Yeah, I never got paid for what I did, man. Never got paid. Why not? I was only 15, and the thing was is that, you know, back then it was difficult to have contracts. You should not get paid for it. It, 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 that it, was a, it was a hard thing to get a, 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 a minor yeah. under contract and be able to make money back then. So that's what the unfortunate situation was. I mean, there was promises made that weren't kept. Mm. So when the song, when they got talking about got ganked, I was the first one to get ganked. Basically that. I was the first one to get ganked mm. back in the day. But it was a lesson learned, of course. Mm. Um, even just because I did that, I, 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 it opened uh, several doors for me in, in okay. many aspects uh, after the fact. For okay. other things, man, like I said, I got to open up for many people. I got to DJ for people. I got to to, to, to travel around you know, doing other things, you know, DJing mainly, okay. um, met a lot of people. Um, and then, you, you know, of course got pussy behind it too. Hey, Hey, uh, I got that. I, I'm talking about 16, you know, I was smashing bras growing <laughs> because hey, of it. What can I tell you that? What can I tell you? But, uh, from, from there, man, you know, I got an opportunity to get into the, the music scene again, but just in the background now. Okay. And that's a little bit more my, my, my thing. You know, I was skinny as hell in high school. Okay. But now look at me, man. I'm I'm six three, three fifteen. Mm. I've studied four different styles of martial arts. Are you a dangerous, motherfucker? I'm not dangerous, man. I'm I'm just I I just by God's mercy, man, I can protect myself and, okay. and, and, and those around me, man, but I'm not dangerous, man. Snoop ain't, ain't paying you to, to pay you to not to be dangerous. No, I mean yeah, how the, how, how Snoop the, paid me to make Snoop, Snoop I work for I I work for Papa. Okay. Uh, and I work with dog. I do whatever, whatever is necessary and needed to make sure that he's safe and to keep from from even needing to you the necessity for being dangerous. Like you know, that's not what by, being a bodyguard is about. A bodyguard is not about jumping on people, man. It's not about uh, uh, putting your hands on somebody. That's the last thing you want to do. Right, right. I right? get that. That's not what. That's not. That's not how you work. That's not how. To, that's not what being a bodyguard is about. Of course, it's like, hey, you see something. You get that you get that person in and you get them the fuck out. Ain't no standing around trying to fight all that's not that's not right. what being a bodyguard is about. If you're doing all that, bro, you 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 shouldn't even right. be in the business because right. that means you can't control this. Right. I I um I've worked with a lot of security guys in my life in, mm -hmm. in the club business. I've had bodyguards. Mm -hmm. And um you're right, a good bodyguard just to keep, <clears throat> keep keep you out of a position, but a bad bodyguard can get you sued. Thank you. Okay, and he'll find himself in jail while you fight the lawsuit because they're not going to sue him. They may make him a defendant, but you're going to sue the big man with the money because right. if he wasn't here, you if you wasn't there, he wouldn't be here. So right. trust me, been there, done it, got the t-shirt. Right there, it is there. I had one bodyguard though, man. He took his job too goddamn serious. <laughs> he took his job too damn serious. I, I mean, we, we was in Hollywood Live. Oh, Wrecking Crew was hot as fish grease, boy. Mm. They had a party, and we went from Hollywood Live on Hollywood Boulevard. I got this cutie pie. We, you know, she she feeling Wrecking Crew, yeah. and and she oh crawled up on you know back up on it in that whole nine yards. I'm getting my groove on, and this big motherfucker standing behind me the whole time. And she said, why is he staring at me like that? I said, I don't know, nigga, but you got to go. No. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you not only blocking my safe, protecting my safety, you blocking you all action. You scared you scared all the way. Ass, man. You know, he's standing there looking at her like, like no, man, she ain't got no weapon that's going to hurt me whatsoever. Right. If it's, it's going to hurt me, I want it anyway. Hey, folks, this is Lonzo, the Godfather, West Coast Hip Hop, kicking with my man, Jack Weiss, from back in the day. Uh, a, a OG unsung member, OG unsung member of NWA, folks. I was too young, man. But I, but do me now. I, I mean, you don't know this, but at the age of twenty, mm -hmm. I became Muslim. Okay, that was uh, 
Oh yeah, now we'll be talking like twenty. Twenty nine. Damn man, twenty nine years, years ago. Now. Damn, I'm old. Yeah, twenty nine years. Yeah, so I changed my name. You know, I've been going by the name of Khalifa. Okay. For twenty nine years now. Okay. Khalif, you know, you should have heard the word when when, when people were saying Khalif. Dog didn't know who that was. Who the hell is Khalif? And then when he see me, oh Jacquees, man, <laughs> <laughs> he still he he still. Sometimes he call me brother Khalif, but when we get to laughing and talking about old school stuff, man, or or something going on, Queez, take it to Queez, man. He still call me that, man. He's still not used to it after mm. four years of being. I ain't mad at him. I ain't mad. He's, he's like a pretty cool. I, I, we we met. We had a chance to met, but never had a chance to kick it. Right, right. I met him on a, a YouTube uh, channel uh, years about four or five years ago. That now. GGN thing is that, his YouTube channel. No, down in uh, down in uh, in the real YouTube channel down in uh, Marina Del Rey. They got a, a whole big old where it was an old uh, helicopter factory. Really? That's, yeah. I think that's me. Oh, that's my work phone. Oh shit! Yeah, that's the work. Is phone. it a dog alert? No, nah, they gonna have to wait. Okay. Um. Anyway, we had a chance to meet, and I walked up to him. Hey, man, this is, I'm lying. So, nigga, I know who you is, homie. You the OG, man. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, that's like, okay. dog. I'm like, all right, that's man. Never right had a chance there, to bro. kick it, but you know, he made made me feel real comfortable in a brief time. We kicked it for a minute. Gave one of my book. Got a picture with him and stuff. But I, I, I would like to, cause he, I'd like to talk to him one day. I would like to catch him out of his, out of Hollywood and just kick it with him. Cause right. he, I watched his interviews. He's always seemed like a smart dude. He always seemed like a real generous person. And it, 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 it just, uh, I'd like to talk to him. I'd like to, like, like to see, what's in this, see what his conversation is like. But that's something else. You never know. It might happen one day when he's expected. Right. Right. I know enough of a bodyguard. I can get to him. I, I, I damn sure I can get to him. <laughs> you know enough people that work for him. Yes, huh? sir. Hey, folks, this is Lonzo, the Godfather of West Coast Hip Hop, kicking with my man, Jacquees, bodyguard for Snoop Dogg, and one of the unsung, unsung, unknown members of NWA. And yes, I can verify that. He ain't somebody that's putting something out of his ass. He's he's real OG from the, from when my studio was called Lonzo Land back in the day, okay? I walk back here today. I'm like, man, I don't remember all this. Oh yeah, I mean, it's just, I've been here for I've been here living in this house for like 36 years, dude. So a lot of shit has been. I just don't throw shit away because I got so much stuff, man. That people, oh man, you got this, you got that. I just sold um, one of Dre's jackets, man, on Sotheby's for a nice piece of change. Really? Oh yeah. So um, I, this is like a museum, okay? I'm walking back here. I'm like, I remember. I don't. Rem- I, re- I thought everything was like in the house. Mm-mm. Like I remember when we came in. We came in through the garage, and that was the first time I, had, I think I'd ever seen. You, you had a seven series BMW. I had six, six series. Six series. Six okay, series. Okay. Six thirty three. Six series BMW. That OG baller. That motherfucker was clean. OG baller. Yes, sir. But I don't like. I just don't remember walking. See, well, I don't remember. This wall wasn't was. here either. So which one? This one. It, it's, it's, it's stuff behind that wall right there. Anyway, we'll have to check it out. But yeah, we it's a little bit different. Things have things have changed and things have changed. Stay the same as well, folks. Right. All right, folks, we're gonna wrap this show up right quick. Thanks, thank y'all for, for watching another episode of NWA. Now for the Alonzo, thank my guest, Jacquees. I appreciate it, brother. Super super beat boxer, uh, <laughs> lost member of NWA, and all around uh hell of a cat. Uh, when it comes to putting hands on things, but he don't put hands on things as he has to. That's, bro, I'm not trying to see nobody's jail set. I ain't, I ain't mad at you. I ain't been in there. I ain't mad at and you. And I don't want to go. All right, y'all. On, on that note, we out of here. Peace, y'all. Deuces.